Thanks Morning Brew for sponsoring this video. Everybody loves pizza and I am no different. Today I'm gonna to show you how I learned to master the cast iron pizza. At the same time, we just got our merch drop, beautiful Google Food shirts. And if you want one, make sure you check it out on the link in the description down below everybody. The same exact one that I wear in every video. Making cast iron pizza can be super easy. Here's the basics. You wanna first get a nice coating of oil throughout the pan. Then spread that dough right on top. Throw in some pizza sauce and a good amount of cheese. Cook it in your stove top until you get a nice golden crust. And to finish it, throw it in your oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Because after 20 minutes, this is what you're left with. Now that is a cast iron pizza. That's the basics. However, there's a lot of questions to be answered. So let's begin. Do you really need an oven? Or can we do this 100% on the stove? So let's go ahead and run this experiment right now. As always, make sure you coat the edges of the pan to get a good amount of olive oil in there. Stretch out your store-bought dough and throw in that homemade pizza sauce. Then go ahead and add a good amount of cheese. And as you can see, I added a generous amount. Outside we go to our gas stove. With my stove, I cannot keep it under high heat. If not, it will burn before it cooks. I'm keeping the heat really low. I immediately cover the pizza with a lid. After about 5 minutes, this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's actually working a little bit. Let me cover this up so that we don't lose any heat. Because after about 15 minutes, you want to turn the heat completely off. Then let it just sit there completely covered and it's going to cook all the way through. Because once that time is up, take a look. The cheese is nicely melted. Obviously, we don't have a golden brown color on the cheese. But if we take a look at the bottom of the pizza, oh yes, I cannot believe this actually worked. Is it perfect? No, it's not. I think one of the worst things about it is that we don't have any caramelization on top. Yes, I can fix that with a torch real quick, but that would be running away from the point. We're trying to do this 100% on the stove and nothing else. So let's go ahead and slice this up and see how it tastes. And check it out. It looks like the dough was fully cooked. The cheese on the top, we already know that it's not perfect. On the bottom, yes, it's cooked all the way through. But now, how does it taste? Well... Alright Leo, try this one. Damn, Guga. This, this pizza's looking really white. <laughs> Forget about the looks, let me know the taste. Alright. It tastes good. The dough is fully cooked. There's a little bit of a crust on it. But the cheese is just the only downfall of it. You, you don't really get that toastiness or that crunch from the cheese itself. So overall, the flavors are good, but texturally, it's just missing something. Maybe you need some charcoal or something. I don't know. Maybe you got to heat this up or something. It's tasty, though. I like it. It's just not perfect. It would have been so much better with the melted cheese. Yeah, I'm going to eat the whole thing, though. Know that. Obviously, the cheese is not going to have that caramelization which we all love and what the boys were looking for. But at the same time, it did cook the pizza all the way through. If I don't have an oven available and I only have a stove, you better believe it, I'll try this method. Now, let me ask you this. Is it really necessary to use a cast iron pan? Or will any other pan work just fine? Well, let's find out right now. If I can cook a good pizza on this one right here, oh man, then there will be no reason at all why you cannot make great pizza at home. I did the same exact way as I do with a cast iron skillet. Made sure that everything was fully coated with olive oil and threw my pizza dough in there. Then I added a good amount of sauce followed by the cheese. Oh yes, add as much as you like. Then I took it out to the stove and started to cook. And everything so far was working like a charm. Of course, until it was time for me to check the bottom because that thing is stuck. But if you take your time, take a look. Oh yes, it cooked the bottom nicely. Now let's throw it in the oven to finish. And as you already know, my oven is at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and it's gonna rest in there for 25 minutes. And once that time was up, take a look. Not the greatest pizza I ever made and it is tough to take it off. Everything is completely stuck. What a nightmare. All we really want to know is how does it taste? Is it going to be good? I mean it's fully cooked and as I'm filming you can see that my friends cannot wait. This pizza is not perfect but I'll tell you one thing for whatever reason you don't have a cast iron skillet first of all go get yourself one because it will be better but if you ask me if this worked I say yes but now I have the nightmare of cleaning this up. Will I ever do this again? Absolutely not but this does work. Is making homemade sauce really worth it? Or can we just get it from the store? Well, let's find out right now because I'm going to show you my favorite recipe. I first started by sauteing some onions with a good amount of olive oil. And as always, exact amount always in the description down below for you. After cooking the onions for about a minute, I threw in some garlic. Keep the temperature under medium-low heat. Then I threw in a full can of tomato sauce. And most importantly, pay attention that I'm not using a cast iron skillet to do this. The acidity from the tomato will ruin the cast iron skillet seasoning. After mixing it and combining 
combining everything together, I threw in a good amount of balsamic vinegar, followed by freshly chopped basil, Worcestershire sauce, a good amount of salt, followed by a good amount of sugar, and to finish it off, freshly ground black pepper. Mix it well and reduce the sauce into the consistency that you're happy with. To finish off the sauce, I like to add a good quality olive oil. Mix everything well because my sauce is done. That is how easy it is to make this pizza sauce. But now the real question is this, is it worth making this? Or should we just buy it from the store? But I can't have my friends eat just the sauce by itself. So I went ahead and made some pizza bread. The interesting thing about this is that it is the same exact process as if you were cooking a pizza. Because as you can see, once I took it out of the oven, look, that is pizza bread, friends. And I'll show you how to make that real shortly. Because even though we have great results, this test is not about this, but it is about the sauce. So let's go ahead and let the guys tell us which sauce is best, homemade or store-bought. Sauce is good, but I got nothing to compare it to, so let's just go on ahead. Hey. This one over here, it just has so much more flavor. The flavor is everything, guys. Like, if you if you go for a sauce, the whole reason is for the flavor. So, I'm going with this one. This one's this one's my winner. Before moving forward, I want to thank the amazing sponsor of today's video, Morning Brew. Morning Brew is a daily newsletter that gets delivered to you seven days a week. They provide the latest news across categories like technology, business, and finance. All through shorts, easily digestible, and informative articles. Plus, their cover pictures and GIFs are hilarious. Let's face it, nowadays, traditional news is dry and boring, but not Morning Brew. They make reading the news fun and enjoyable, which are words I never thought would come out of my mouth. I will go through most days unaware of what's going on in the world. But Morning Morning Brew has allowed me to stay up to date all before breakfast time. Did you know that all of the major Wall Street banks are raising the salaries of their first year analysts to $100,000? Well, they did. Thanks to Morning Brew, I know. It is completely free and it takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. Thanks Morning Brew for my daily news briefing. Sign up for free by clicking on the link on the description down below. Thank you Morning Brew for sponsoring this video, but now let's get right back to it. But now let's answer this question. Should you really be grading your cheese at home or is the store bought one just fine. Here I have two packaging of the same brand. One is pre-graded and the other one is not. If you take a look at the back and the ingredients, it tells you exactly what it is. It has an anti-cocking blend. If they don't add this, when you get your cheese, it's all gonna be clumped up together. That is the last thing you want. Now, if you go ahead and grate the cheese yourself at home, you will not have this issue. As you can see, there is a difference between them. But what I really care about is the flavor. Does one taste better than the other? Well, let's find out right now. The taste of these two cheeses is exactly the same. The only difference is that this one is a lot softer. Okay, so the flavor is like identical. There's barely any difference at all. This one's a little bit softer and I do feel like in the mouth, there's a little bit more of a powdery feeling on the outside of each cheese, but this one doesn't really have that. So that's pretty much it. It's the same thing, just maybe you can tell that powder. I'll tell you what, for the cheese, it is not worth it. You know why? Yes, they do feel different when you're taking a bite, but at the same time, when you're gonna go inside of the oven, it's gonna melt everybody. You're not gonna be eating the cheese as is. When it melts, it makes no difference. That is why most of the pizzerias use that. But yes, if you grate it at home, it's gonna be slightly better, but not worth it. Now let's jump into pizza dough. Is it worth making it at home? Or can you just buy one like this from the grocery store? So let's go ahead and make some. There's always exact amount and ingredients always in the description down below for you. The first thing I like to do is to mix all of the dry ingredients first. Once that's done, I throw in all of the wet ones. Then I put it in a mixer to combine everything together. Once that's done, I put in the dough hook attachment. Then I let it mix for an additional 10 minutes. Now I throw in some olive oil, mix it all around, close it with clinch plastic. Then the next step makes it even easier for for me because on my oven I have a dough proof setting and it only takes one hour to do it because once the one hour is up take a look it has more than double its size so now all there's left to do is to split it in two balls the only thing left to do now is to cook it and for that I first started by coating the pans with a good amount of olive oil so I first go in with the homemade one stretch it just a little bit to ensure that it goes all the way to the edges and I'll tell you one thing this dough is very easy to work with because unlike the one that I bought from the store is much harder it's even giving me a hard time taking it out of the bag. But hey, let's go ahead and cook them. For that, I took them outside and threw them in my stove. The important thing is to cook them here on the medium high heat until you get a nice golden brown color on the bottom just like this. Once that's done, I throw them in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 minutes. As you can see, once the time was up, this is what they look like. Maybe I'm using way too much fat on my dough. 
because the store-bought one looks way better. Mine on the other hand, it's alright. Check out the bottom of the store-bought one. Nice char and perfectly golden brown. And let's take a look at mine on the bottom. I would say they look almost identical. And how about the inside? Let's take a look. Ooh, we got nice large bubbles on the store-bought one. Mine on the other hand doesn't look as good. But hey, the most important thing for me is the taste. So let's try this out and see which one is best. Soft, fluffy, got a little crunch. Really, really good overall. Cheers. Nice and crunchy. Inside, nice and soft. That's always good. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one now. Let's talk about flavor first. I like the flavor of the first one that I tried a lot. It's a little bit more salty, which personally I really do enjoy. And I like this one a lot. Now the second one, you lose a little bit of that saltiness. It's really good. It just tastes like it's a little more neutral, I would have to say. Now the texture. The first one is a lot thicker. It's more dense. I prefer this texture when it comes to bread. Moving on to this one, it's thinner, it's fluffier, it's airier, and the crust, you still taste it, but not it's not as pronounced as the first one. So overall, I'm gonna have to go with the first one. Overall, it's gonna go to this one right here. This is the winner. But now to answer the next question, should we let the dough rise before we start the whole process? Because so far, I've just been putting it and going straight to the stove. There's only one way for us to find out, and that is to test it. I did the same exact thing as before. Threw in a good amount of olive oil on the pan and opened up my pizza. Since I'm gonna let it rise, I coat the whole thing with a good amount of olive oil right on top. Then I covered it with clinch plastic so that it can proof. All there's left to do now is to let it rest for one hour. Because once I have done so, take a look. It has completely doubled in size. So I went ahead throw in a good amount of sauce, spread it all out and made sure to get it all the way to the edge. Then I went ahead and covered the whole thing with cheese. A good amount of cheese. As you can see, I was not sure. The more cheese, the better. Then it was time to cook. And to my surprise, this happened. Since this dough is completely rested, it is rising even more as I'm cooking it. That could be a big problem. If you don't poke it with a knife, things will start falling out. So make sure you do not walk away from this one. Once you have a nice golden brown color on the bottom the way you like it, it's time to throw it in the oven. And for best result, I throw it in the air fryer setting at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. Because once it was done, take a look. Now that is looking delicious. And you see that golden dark colors in the edges? That's the sauce that got caramelized. And that is one of my favorite parts. As you can see, because we let the dough rise, we have a complete different result. The edge is nice and crispy. Take a look at these little bubbles. And at the same time, we have a nice golden brown color on the bottom. Oh man, the only thing left to do is to find out how it tastes. Alright, let's try this one. Alright, Google. Uh, this looks a lot better than the last one you gave me. And that's what I'm talking about. This is a bad slice of pizza. Cheese is perfectly melted on this one. The dough is cooked very well. There's a little bit of crunch on the bottom. You get that same crunch, crispiness of the cheese on top. It's savory, there's not too much sauce. It's absolutely perfect. Try this one. Yeah, this is the one. The bottom's just a little bit crunchy. The cheese on the top is Perfectly melted. 10 out of 10, Google. Good job, let me get a fist bump. That's it guys, that's my take on pizza. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll tell you one thing, making pizza at home could not be any easier. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something, I definitely did. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care everybody, bye-bye.